So I'm looking at some hearing devices here, Dr. Whitaker. Yeah. These are teeny. Like, who who wants to wear small hearing devices? Is that something... Everybody. You, you hear it often. Everybody. In fact, we want to talk today about invisible mm, hearing aids. Don't want to see it. Don't want to see it. I don't want to want see it. Want it as discreet thing. as possible. I want to hear. I don't want to see it. We're talking hearing. Don't want to see it. So, exhibit A is red. You mm. see the little guy. Now, you'd look at that and say, it looks very bright. Mm -hmm. It yeah, looks it very look obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. It looks like that's not invisible that's by right. any means. This looks very obvious. What's interesting about this is they call it invisible in the canal, or IIC. Other, other people might call it CIC, which means completely in the canal. But either way, that device is meant to go in your little you know, your little ear canal and really disappear. You know, I hesitate always to use a word like invisible because obviously you can see it. Yeah. It's right there. Right. And when you put it in, it's very discreet. In fact, in some ears, it's pretty darn close to invisible. Right. But when we're talking invisible, we're, what we really mean is very discreet. Yeah, extremely good looking. Extreme. So Ooh. what? what's interesting That's your about, specialty. I know. You look good too. Well. So this uh, this little device, typically has a, a vent bore hole, which allows air to kind of come in and out of the canal. But like Dr. Whitaker said, it's meant to be very small. So the face plate is this back edge. That's the part that possibly could be seen. And you, you know what I like to do sometimes with those? Make it black. Dark. Let's go right? other sight. Because this looks kind of skin toned and a lot of people think that's going to make it disappear. But when you put something deep, it kind of has a shadow. There's it, a shadow effect. If I look down your ear canal, your ear canal looks like a black hole. Does it look hole. like skin? No, it looks like no, a black No, it looks like, hole. so sometimes we'll even, if we want to go even more discreet. And we, have, we have that ability, depending on where it sits, if it's not sitting as deeply as maybe we hoped, we might go with a, a skin tone. But if that thing is really buried, I would go dark. Sometimes we do. It surprises people to see a red hearing aid with a black faceplate, and we call it invisible. But The other thing you can see here is that the device has, yes, the faceplate, but there's a little microphone. So that's where sound's being picked up is on this side, obviously, because it's closest to the outside where the sound could be picked up. There's a retrieval line. In uh. other words, it goes so deep, you can't grab this unless you have a retrieval line. And it even has a little bulge, kind of like a little bubble there, you can see, to kind of put your fingernail under. And You're telling me that's not an antenna? That is the most common thing people say. Everybody, everybody. Can you see my antenna? What does like, the antenna do? Mrs. Jones, it's not an antenna. Should I put this in? I, I want to see it in your it. ear. Let's see how invisible this is. While I'm putting it in, tell us some of the advantages to this one. So this is a really great hearing aid for someone that has hearing loss across the frequency spectrum. So the most common hearing loss that we see is a hearing loss in the high frequencies and normal hearing or, or mild hearing loss in the low frequencies. But these work best when people have hearing loss across the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. Because when you put that in your ear, it's gonna plug your ear. It's gonna create yep. a little bit of an ear plug. Yep. We're not trying to preserve a lot of natural hearing. And so uh, this, this is a really good one for an individual that has hearing loss across the frequency spectrum. Sometimes individuals come in, like you said, and their, their hearing loss is more of a flat loss or a gradual loss. They have some hearing loss in the bass tones and they happen to golf, they happen to hike, mm. they happen to sweat, and they like to be active. It's, it's a great fit for that type It's another of good advantage because, because it fits so deeply in your ear, it blocks, it shields the device from wind. So if you're out golfing and the wind is blowing, it just blows golf right cart. on by, mm -hmm. doesn't touch the mics. We've all been on our cell phone in the wind before, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the wind blows across it. When wind blows across microphones, you get that horrible wind noise, but this is shielded from that. Mm -hmm. So minimal. Minimal, minimal wind noise. Now, one <laughs> other thing that's interesting, does this one have Bluetooth? So that's a great question. Most of these devices that go deeply inside the ear do not do great with Bluetooth yep. because I learned recently, Bluetooth does not travel through water. Yep. And our bodies are com uh, composed primarily of? Yeah, water. water. You wouldn't think the skin has a lot of water in it, but it turns out it does. So and, yeah. And so when, it, when, when something that needs to be very efficient with Bluetooth is close to skin, and especially inside your skull, it's almost impossible. It's gonna be intermittent it's very at best. And in fact, and the devices that do work are almost always bigger Quite than a bit one. bigger. They can't go so deep. They have to have some of the antenna, uh, you know, coming, Something kind of coming out a little bit. So. Yeah. So yeah, that's a disadvantage, you know, to these, is that you can't really do Bluetooth. 
Tell me about the battery with these right. little invisible guys. So what's nice is they do work. They work for several days. And if you're positive, you're thinking, hey, I like that. I only need to change the battery, you know, about every three to five days. Not too, not too bad. That's not usually how people look at it, though. But when we say, you got to change the battery about every three days. Most people are like, oh, hmm, that that's seems weird. like a kinda, lot. They think of their watch and they're like, well, I don't change my watch battery that often, yeah. Dr. Whitaker. Yeah. Why, do, why do I need to do that? Because in our lives, almost everything now has rechargeable batteries, right? I mean, our phones, we plug in every night. Our laptops, we mm -hmm. plug in and charge. Even some of our cars. These little devices, because they're so small and they're invisible, they just, there's not rechargeable, there's not a rechargeable format. Not there's a lot of great rechargeable great. options. Some of these custom hearing aids have rechargeable options, but again, not invisible. not invisible, they're bigger, mm -hmm. they're a little more obvious. So another really good option. Mm -hmm. Probably that is, the most common option. And very discreet. Again, we never, we hesitate to use invisible. I mean, invisible. looking at it, which one would you choose? One's clearly smaller than the other, but. I show these to my patients and I would say the majority. If you were just to say, which one appeals to you more? Mm. Mm. They jump right here. Mm. And then you start talking pros and cons. You start talking battery, you start, you start talking Bluetooth, mm -hmm. you start talking the fact that it's gonna occlude your ear more if you go with this right. guy. Suddenly, this one's starting to seem a little more they start saying, oh, practical. this device connects to my cell phone. That mm. means I can listen to my podcast, some music. My cell phone, my phone calls come through this device. Mm -hmm. And then they say, no battery. Don't have to change it's it. It's waterproof. They start saying, oh, and I don't feel plugged. I love yeah. that open feeling Feels it gives more, me. Yeah. It feels better. And then they put it on, they go, oh, I can't, I can't really see it anyways. Yeah. So it looks like it's much larger because it is yeah but when you actually put it on the ear it's pretty nice and and I've had the experience multiple times I'm sure you had to, you have two where we let a patient try both right we say hey try them both because there's exactly. pros and cons and the majority of people when they I try mean, both the majority the vast majority guess what they end up with and it's and it's not because of the size it's because they like the way it sounds, sounds feels fits the practicality of it one the, thing that's the behind really, the ear is, yep. is it one thing that's really cool about the behind the ear device is that it has two and sometimes three microphones on each ear mm. whereas these little teeny ones they only have one microphone so which device is going to be you know able to pick out noise able to reduce some things enhance things better it's just more sensitive. It's I more know. specific, right? For me, this one, this one's, this one's got the riz. Yeah, ooh, it's pretty hip. So <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, let's try this on. I'm just going to show you what happens here. So because it's more discreet than you'd think, I right? I don't really want any interference. So I'm just going to take the glasses off for a second. Common to do, right? Yep. Take the glasses off. So we're going to just put it on. So you can kind of see it sits there, and then this little guy goes in the ear here and then you just kind of punch it in. I like to make sure the wire's right in front of my ear, mm -hmm. and if it's fit correctly, you'll notice that it's really difficult to see because the wire has a little pink wire. It's like a pink tint, and it matches in with so many, you know, the, the skin tone of so many that we fit, and it, and it comes in different lengths. Um, Turn towards me a little bit. Yeah. Let me see you this guy. See I want to see this guy. Okay, I'm coming, coming to you. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, again, it's super discreet. Yeah. And Unless at, you're looking for that. Looking at the ear canal, it goes deep in. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. In fact, from a 45, it's it's hard to see. It's, it's again, close to invisible. And mm -hmm. it, now, of course, for men that wear their hair short, like me. if you're looking straight from behind, we show them? I think you ought to turn around. Okay, here's the back. It's still pretty discreet. We tend to try to choose a color that's a little bit darker than the hair color mm -hmm. because the ear kind of casts a shadow. And if you're trying to match the hair and the shadow back there, the dark color looks really nice. I mean, that's... Yep. That's very discreet. There's the back of my head for you. These are the two options again to pull it out. You just kind of right down by the opening. You can just grab the little wire and uh, pull it out. And to when people say, I want to look my best, I want to hear my best, and uh, I don't really want to fuss with it. I don't want to have too many, like I don't want to have to play with it too much. They typically go with the device that sits on top of the ear yep. because it's more flexible. And I was going to say, those things you just described, that's almost every patient, right? right. They want to hear their best, oh, yeah. but they don't want to be embarrassed by the way it looks. Exactly. And they, they, they want something that, that's cool and practical and, and that meets their needs. And so, yeah, to me, yep. that guy right there. Pretty nice. 
These are your two very, very practical, very different, but very good looking devices. If you're shooting for, I want to be healthy, I want to take care of my hearing health, but I want to look my best too, all at the same time. These are really good options. And so those are the types of things we look at. The yeah. hearing loss, the lifestyle needs, the anatomy, the wax uh, production, those right, type right. of things. Yeah, yeah. So those are, those are important decisions as you're going through a kind of a consultation with a professional about what should I wear for the next five to seven years. Um, you know, you can lean on us for our expertise, and we want you to look good. We want <laughs> you to hear your best, but why not hear well? and look good, yeah, so I love this discussion. That's our goal, right? Yeah. I love this discussion about looking your best, invisible technologies. And I think that was a really good point that speaks to the importance of talking to a professional because there may be factors that you don't realize when you're trying to pick a hearing aid uh, and, and and most people don't know the amount of hearing loss they have and exactly what frequencies well, are involved. How would you know and, if you have a difficult ear canal that yeah, looks like you, Zion's National Park? You never look in your own ear canal, right? Yeah. So, I mean, these are things that, these are discussions that are important to have with a professional that can help you make a good decision. That's right.